tēnei o ngā wahi nei toa, no roto nei a koutou, o mai te whakipaki, o tō koutou kōtiro, nei ane nga tsaikis. Tutelage of great Māori women like Mira Tikata, 
um, uh, winning a scholarship to the United World College of Southeast Asia, where I was point point by the former Premier of um, Singapore at the time, David Marshall, who was the Prime Minister there before Lee Kuan Yew. And his daughter and I still maintain a very close friendship. I became chairperson or head girl of that school. I won a scholarship to summer school in Cambridge University. I met great leaders, Tawani was one of them, her father was there with um, Bob Mahuta completing a doctorate. Mm -hmm. And I was told by them to come home because they thought I was becoming a potato, you know what those <laughs> are. <laughs> Brown on the outside and all white in the middle. And so I came home and I came back to Victoria University and I came back to a te reo Māori struggle by great leaders, Hannah Jackson, people who never had the reo. Sid Jackson, <coughs> Diane Prince, Dan Mihaka. Those are the people who went to jail for us to have the rights of our rule. And I went to Victoria University when they were in the heart of their protests for the language. They were joined by a great group of Pacific Island leaders to be formed um, then in Ngā And as a young girl from Rotorita, you could not help but be impressed by the strength and the calibre of that leadership. And behind them was these intellectual leaders. Koro Jews, great, great leader. Widabu Parker, great, great leader. Rooka Broughton, great, great leadership. And our own families came down often, because Koro was married to Kura Rauruti. And so we brought quite often the intellectuals of Tarawa. You know, um, um, Nanny Makarita Malcolm was there often with Tina coming down to a poi poi us to make change and provide leadership. I came home um, for a little while because I was a bit despondent at university. It's really lonely in the 1970s and 80s. You can look around in a room and there might be five or six of you. Now there's 500 graduating from universities, 500 lawyers. But in that time, they weren't there. I um, also became very much involved in the struggle for social justice campaign like um, the Springbok Tour. My father never talked to me. Everyone knows my Pākehā father, you understand why he never talked to me. He was the chairperson, I think, of the Bay of Plenty Rugby Union at the time. <laughs> huge dramas in my father, huge, huge dramas. But my mother told me to follow my beliefs, and I listened to the words of my grandmother that I had to fight where I saw injustice, and to rectify it, especially for Māori. I went to Auckland University, and these are some of the things, people, you need to know about me and Lila. We didn't just get law degrees, we were at the top of our game in our law degrees. I got the senior law prize, so did Lila. <coughs> we haven't aspired to be judges with those prizes. We've aspired to help the poor, to help the unionists, to help the people who can't afford lawyers. That's why I've always loved Lila, because she turned her back on the trappings of the power of that profession, but like I have, because it doesn't make sense for me to go and become a lawyer, to become a judge, while the poor can't get the best advocates because there's no legal aid. Thank you. That's why. Right. And then I got my, you know, I put my teeth to the grind and I did my hard yards. I fought for our forests. I fought for our lakes. I fought for the fisheries. I ended up in Privy Council sharing a bed with Willie Emery. I hope he was going to be here. Because we couldn't afford to pay for our fares to go to London. But we were there because the photocopying was costing more than we could even afford for Kai. Why did we do that? To get 21 radio stations and to get our, our Māori television. Why did we do that? Because the Pākehā government keeps telling us, no, you're wrong to want those that are rights. But we fought, and quite often we fought alone. And that's how I felt when Hone was put out in the cold for challenging the policies, not of the Māori Party, but of a cruel national government. And it's cruel. We just have to look across the road. I broke down last year when I saw 90 families at Tachikawa lose their jobs just before Christmas. And they still haven't found work. And here we are living next to the largest man-made forest in the southern hemisphere. And we can't use that wood to find work, to invest in wood processing so our people get jobs. I'll tell you this, mana will not go into any arrangement in this election unless there's a guarantee of investment, 
and of centre for those word processing rights to be opened again and our families to have jobs.